All right, this is kind of an in a nutshell review real quickly. One of the things we want to be able to tell is our relationships uh, proportional, okay? So here's what they look like in equation. This is your mama's ex-boyfriend. We've talked about that. If it has a boyfriend, it is not proportional. Also, if the, the mama is negative, it's not proportional because we are only considering things. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little more when we get to graph. But only things are going uphill. So right now, that boyfriend makes that thing not proportional. You're giving somebody $2 each time, but they're starting out owing somebody $5. Okay? Y equals one-third X. Any boyfriend back here? No. So that thing is proportional has a constant ratio as well as a constant rate of change. This one's a constant rate of change, but you'll never be able to divide the y by x and get the same thing every time. y equals 7x plus 1. Boyfriend, not proportional. y equals 6x. No boyfriend, proportional. That guy's getting $6 an hour. So if you, maybe this would help if you saw this. That means if I'm paying him, and I pay him zero hours, he gets zero of those sixes, he's got zero dollars. If I pay him once, he has six dollars. If I pay him twice, he'll have twelve dollars. If I pay him three times, he'll have eighteen dollars. And if you divide, you get six, you get six. You're going to keep getting six every time. That's called the constant ratio. If I did this guy that was y equals 7x plus 1, if I pay him zero dollars, he still has one dollar because he started with one. So now I pay him once, now he has $8, and I pay him a second time, and now he has $15. When you divide, you get $750, you get $8, it's not the same, there is no constant ratio because it's not proportional. Okay? What does it look like in a table? In a table, when you divide, well, let me take you to the most important thing to check proportionality, da, da, da. y divided by x, not big divided by little not the pretty one divided by the ugly one, it's y divided by x, there's an order. And when you get into a story problem, usually one of them makes sense, like for a unit rate, you might want to go miles per gallon instead of gallons per mile. One will tend to, te to sound better, okay? So let's check to see if this is proportional. Six divided by two is three. Notice I'm doing the y divided by the x. 12 divided by four is three. 30 divided by 10 is three. Did it match every time? That makes it proportional. We could write the equation y equals 3x, and you'll notice there's no boyfriend on it, just like over here. No boyfriend, proportional. And once again, still has to have a positive, positive mama. Okay, let's try the next one. So I divide, I get 5. I divide, I get 4.3 repeating. I don't need to keep dividing. I know it's not proportional. Now I'm going to go ahead and check with something we're going to do in a moment called constant rate of change. We'll see if it's linear. I subtract and I get 8. I subtract and I get 2. I subtract and I get 20, I subtract and I get 5. Now if I divide it, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 20 divided by 5 is 4, so it is linear. That makes that y equals 4x, but there's going to be a boyfriend. See that 4 that I keep getting is kind of like this 3, only this 3, I got there right by dividing. I didn't have to subtract and then divide. So I'll just show you how to finish this off. If I substitute this 1 in for x, what is 4 times 1? It's 4. But I don't want to be at 4, I want to be up to 5, so I have to add 1. There's the plus 1 that we talk about, or that, that boyfriend that changes it. Now this should work every time. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 1 is 33. Alright, so if you can just divide y by x and you get the same thing every time, it is proportional. In a graph, there are three things we're looking for. Is it going uphill? That's the positive slope that we talked about it has to have. Is it in a straight line, can't have any curves, can't change and go different directions, and does it hit the point zero, zero? Straight line through zero, zero, going uphill, that thing would be proportional. Even if it's a straight line going uphill, but it doesn't hit zero, zero, that makes it not proportional. Because this is something where there was an added thing in there. Somebody added something. There's a boyfriend on that equation. Okay. Practice this constant rate of change idea just a couple times. I divide, I get 4.5. I divide, I don't get 4.5, so it is not proportional. So that's where we have to do this. The big idea for constant rate of change is difference of y over difference of x. In other words, we have to subtract before we divide. So difference of y here is 10. Difference of y here is 2. I'm going to write that as 10 over 2 just so you get that idea. When I subtract here, 
44 minus 19, well that's 25. And I subtract and I get 5. Now when I, after I did subtraction when I divide them, I get 5 and 5, so they match now, and I could write y equals 5x, but with a boyfriend. So let's check out where that boyfriend is. If I substitute 2, what's 2 times 5? 10. But I don't want to be at 10, I want to be at 9. So I must have to subtract 1. Let's make sure it works. 4 times 5 is 20. What's 20 minus 1? 19 is working. We have our equation, but notice, boyfriend, not proportional, so it's not going to hit 0, 0. Okay? Check the next one. Proportional? Well, let's check. Divide, I get 9. Divide, I don't get 9. I get 4.3 repeating. Mm, not proportional. So I start doing div sub subtraction first. I subtract and I get 4. Subtract and I get 2. 4 divided by 2. Okay. Subtract and I get 2. Subtract and I get 1. Okay. Both times I get 2. That means it's going to be y equals 2x. But there will be a boyfriend, right? So let's try to find it again. Substitute 1 there. What's 2 times 1? 2. How am I going to end up at 9 if I got to only 2? I have to add 7. Let's make sure it works. 3 times 2 is 6. What's 6 plus 7? 13, and it's working every time. Okay? So here, now we know what proportional looks like in a couple different ways. We know how to find the constant rate of change even if it's not proportional. A couple other things that will be on your test from Chapter 1. Be able to do complex fractions. It's a new look for most of us. Two things on top of each other means divide. You have to go to improper fractions. So remember, you multiply and add. That would change that to four-thirds. You could change that one to five over one. That's how you write it. But we don't divide. We multiply by the reciprocal. So we flip the second one, change it to multiply, and now we multiply across, and I get four on the top, 15 on the bottom, and there's our answer. Remember, it's not a trick to to multiply by the reciprocal. We talked about that's going to a unit rate. That's knocking that bottom out and turning it into one. The other thing we did as a shortcut is this. Remember percent means divide by 100, which means you'll eventually be taking something times one over 100, just like we flipped the second one and changed it to multiply. And when I change this, I would have 54, 55, over nine. Our shortcut, now we could cross simplify, but right now I just want you to get the shortcut. The bottom is going to be 100 times bigger than it was, so it was 9, it's now 900, and the top is going to be the exact same thing it was after we went to an improper fraction. So let me show you that one more time. 7 and 1 third percent, the bottom is going to be 100 times bigger, 300. 21 plus 1 is 22, got it. Shouldn't take us very long now. All right, unit rates, you're going to hear me say this a lot, or you have already heard me say this a lot, I don't want to know how much for 6 items or 5 items. I want how much for one. To be able to compare them, we want to go to a unit rate of one. So dollars per item sounds the best. So I'm just going to write it like this and then divide it. You're going to get 60 cents per item over here. Even though I wrote it backwards, I still want to do the same thing because I want to make sure I have the same labels. So it would be $2.80 for five items. I'm going to divide that and I get 56 cents per item. Which one's a better deal? Well, I want to pay less money, so I would rather pay 56 cents per item. That's the lowest unit cost. Okay? Uh, to go along with that, people really struggle when it's got a fraction in a unit rate problem, so I want to just show you there are 140 calories and 4 ninths of a Mountain Dew. How many calories are there in the entire Mountain Dew? Notice they're asking about one Mountain Dew. That's a unit rate. So use your labels. It says, I really want the calories per Mountain Dew, right? Just put that in there. Calories per Mountain Dew. That's a division problem. You can go to improper fraction, flip the second one, two, eight, three, reciprocal. You can cross simplify, which would make your life easier. And then you're ready to multiply, which you get, what, 315? And if you did it, did it correctly, that's 315 calories per Mountain Dew. There's your label, 315 calories per Mountain Dew. All right. One last thing that I want to go over with you, and that is 
setting up and solving proportions. Proportions is the big idea here. Remember, you've seen me grow things by grabbing the corner and dragging diagonally. That's, that's keeping the ratio correct, a constant ratio. Remember that idea of a picture that you grab on the computer and if you drag it too far down or too far down or too far over, it distorts what the picture looks like. But if you drag it diagonally, it'll look like the same exact picture, just bigger or smaller, right? based on that, but that's a constant ratio. All right, it takes 4.8 hours. Um, oh, let me give you the big idea for this one. You wanna set up proportions? Use your labels, 4.8 hours, 576 cans, and they're connected. So this is what a proportion looks like. It's a ratio equal to a ratio, right? Can't cross simplify, order matters, use your labels. There's a whole bunch of things I've asked you to know about them, but basically, I'm going to use cans and hours, and I'm going to make sure that I put labels so I don't mess it up. 576 cans takes this many hours. I go to my next number. This many cans take this many hours. And the way to solve a proportion, multiply the diagonals, divide by the, divide by the other one. And to be honest, it's not a trick. Remember, we, I showed you what was up my sleeve. It's a trick if, you don't, if I don't, you don't get to see what's up my sleeve and you don't know how to solve that. But the reason it works is because, remember, one half equals, let's say, four eighths. Does everybody agree? I hope you agree because it's correct. Here's what's always true. Four times two is eight. Eight times one is eight. So let's say you didn't know one. Then the way to solve it would be to take this times this, eight times one is eight, divide it by two, and you'll get four. And you might say, well, couldn't you just say, well, you took it times four, so you take it times four. Yes, because that's the idea of taking it really times one. The problem is that sometimes it doesn't come out even. Does that make sense? So this one wouldn't have come out even because when you do it, it actually ends up being, I think, 9.5 hours. And so if it doesn't come out even, it's not as easy just to say, oh, well, I can see exactly what you'd multiplied by. I don't know what that number is you multiplied by to get to from 576 to 1140 like you did down here, but you should be able to do that, okay? So multiply the diagonals, divide by the other one is the shortcut, but really, what are you doing? I hope you understand this because we've talked about this a lot. You're shrinking it down to a unit rate and you're growing it back up to you want whatever you want. So when you did this, when you did this, you're shrinking it down to how many hours per can and then you're growing it back out to 1140 cans. It's the same as when we're doing a unit rate, right? And the reason we do a unit rate is because everybody likes the number one because you can always go to one and then grow it to whatever you want. One fits nicely with every other number. Okay? All right.